Let's talk about tense. So on today's video, we're talking about the ever popular Lan Shan, the Lan Shan 1 and the Lan Shan 2 Pro. I've just received recently the Lan Shan 2 Pro. I'm very familiar with the Lan Shan 1. I took it on the coast to coast with me, swapped that model out for a, a, the exact same model, but in green, and I've used it many a wild camp uh, all over the place. But I'm planning some long distance hikes and there were just a few things that was niggling me with it. So I started to look for something with a little bit more room the Lanshan 1 uh, doesn't have a great deal of room in it. I'm not going to waffle on about anything other than these two tens because that's what the title is, that's what people have come to see, not me waffling on, so let's get straight into this. The Lanshan 1, that retails around about £100. It's a three season tent, the fly sheet is 15D nylon, waterproof index 5000mm, the inner tent high density mesh. The bottom of the tent is 20D nylon, waterproof index 8,000 millimetres. It weighs 845 grams. Without any of the pegs or poles, just the tent on its own, I weighed both tents. And as you can see here is the Lanshan 1 and here is the Lanshan 2 Pro. The Lanshan 2 Pro is a two person tent, it's three seasons. And the tent is 20D double silicon fabric, waterproof index 2000 millimeters, plus 20D nylon breathable gauze. Bottom of the tent is 20D silicon waterproof nylon, waterproof index 5000 millimeters. And that just means how many millimeters of water it would take on the top of that before it started to leak. I'll pop up some drawings with the, with the measurements on there for the Lanshan 2 Pro. We'll do a compare and contrast, and then we'll set the tents up, see how quick they are to set up, take down, and we'll have a little look around them, and see what sort of leg room they've got, etc. And then we'll meet back in the Fungarium later, and we'll have a little final thoughts. This is a time test for setting up the Lanshan 2 Pro. And that's it done, so that's quite quick. I'm used to it because I've set the Lanshan 1 up so many times and it's pretty much identical. Let's have a closer look. Right, let's get the Lanshan 2 Pro set up. We've already seen how it sets up with the time lapse, but let's just talk you through how I set the Lanshan 2 up. I use the footprint to get an idea of where the tent is gonna be. It's a dual entrance, so it doesn't really matter which way you're putting it around. Peg this out first. Using the footprint as a guide, we just get all four of these in. You don't want to put them in too tight because you'll find that when you put your hiking poles or allocated pole up, it'll be too tight. So you want to give yourself a little bit of room. So I just do it nice and loosely. The hiking pole I've got set at 125 centimeters, but I will change it depending on on the weather and everything so if it's uh, if it's really hot i'll have it a bit higher maybe 130 135 the walking pole goes through a little elasticated loop at the bottom into this reinforced piece up at the top here and then this bit can be quite confusing but i will show you it has this little clip on that it doesn't look very strong so i'm going to swap that out for a metal one before i go on my long distance hike but both of these shock cord loops that are on the bottom of the zipper will go through that clip clip it in there like that and then get round to the other side and do the same all your corners can then be used for one peg all three attachments on there this just gives you a bit more leg and headroom when you're in the tent stops condensation getting on you that's it set up and as you can see you've got your bungee cord at the bottom for your, your um, 
your footprint, then you've got your actual uh, inner, and then you've got your outer there. And you want your tent peg on a 45 degree angle, and then you can go around and just tighten everything up. Pulling on these, on your uh, flies, <laughs> pulling your flies down. It's not typically used as a four season tent, and you can tell that because it doesn't run down to the ground. Although in an emergency, you can drop your hiking poles and bring it to the ground. You might get a bit more condensation, but it might stop the snow getting pummeled underneath your tent, which I have experienced before in a pole tent three season. Not good. You can see here the clip. It's like a ram's head clip. And what you want to do, you want to zip up. You've got a Velcro at the bottom and a Velcro midway up. The zips seem okay, they don't catch. Obviously not the best zips in the world, but what do you expect for the price? They do the job just fine. You want to be zipping that up and leaving this attached. So once it's zipped up, it's easy then just to unclip it. This is one thing that I'm glad they sorted out because on the old Lanshan one, one of my gripes was this toggle to hold the door back. The loop that you put the toggle through wasn't elasticated. It was just, well, it wasn't elasticated. <laughs> so it often kept coming loose. And it's nice to see they've sorted that with a nice elasticated loop for that toggle. And they've also added bonus, put another loop there, separate for the bug net, which is a joy. I've put my NeoAir sleeping mat, it's the Xtherm large, just so you know, just for a size comparison. Oosh! Uh, oh yeah! <laughs> it is exciting getting in a tent, I don't care whether you're in your garden or on Everest base camp, it doesn't matter does it, it's just exciting. It's exciting, right come on. I'm 5'10 and there is a good foot, maybe a foot above me. So getting ready is no problem. I can kneel up, move about, do the hokey cokey, whatever. I'm gonna give you all the stats as they say on the website, but let's get let's get it real up in here. So you're looking at about 235 centimetres there to end. So I'd say Sleeping wise, <laughs> you're good at seven foot, mate. You're good to be seven foot at that. That's my feet there. It's sunshine. And you can see there's still another, oh, I don't know, four, five, six inches from my feet. Granted, the air mat's gonna bring me up a little bit and then my sleeping bag on top. That's a rough one. I'm just going off what I've got in here. You could lower this and have it have more room, I suppose. But it's nice to have that bucket up so that you're not having water dripping from the fly and in into your uh, into your little nest. So I've got it here at 120. You've got a little pouch here, which is, I mean, it's not much going on there, is there? You can maybe get your phone in there, your torch, little hooks at each side to maybe hang a lantern or whatever they're for. I've put some. Dyneema cords running from one to the other. I can hang my lantern on there or after a hard day's hiking in the rain I can just use it as a washing line get all the wet stuff up off the floor and just let stuff dry out as much as it can. It's double doored which is amazing. Always a bonus for when you're sleeping with someone who's got a weak bladder. You can do plenty of stuff in here you could do cooking and you can store your bags you can store your bags and wet boots in one side and you do your cooking in the other side. Should we put up the Lansham one next to it to have a look? I think we should. Come on, let's do it. The Lansham one. I don't have it in white anymore. Um, Shout out Jack, mate. He won it in a Patreon competition. He's gonna use the original igloo and he's gonna hike the coast to coast in it 
and then he's going to pass it on to someone else to do their first coast to coast in it so hopefully the original igloo can continue doing the coast to coast until it just collapses and dies and that's <laughs> that's a nice thought welcome back welcome back so yeah the lanshan one the lanshan 2 pro i got mine to do long distance hiking and to save room in my bag they're a great lightweight alternative to more expensive cuban fiber tents like the z packs for example i have a few mods in mind for this lanshan pro 2 but i'll keep you up to date with them once they're done i'm very fond of the lanshan one but i thought i was buying the lanshan 2 just to do some longer distance hikes in in more formidable weathers I, I love it i feel like it is it's got so much more room the weight difference and difference in cost for me it's a no-brainer the lanshan 2 why would you get the lanshan 1 if you're keen to cut every single gram if you're a, an ultra ultra light backpacker and it's the middle of summer and you want something that's ultra light that you're just going to get at the end of your day you're going to get in it and you're just gonna sleep and then repeat the next day, then the Lanshan one might be a better option for you. If you don't use hiking poles, the Lanshan one might be a better option for you because you're not taking two hiking poles with you every time to set your tent up. There is no chilling in this tent. You could maybe lay down on your back, read a book and just ch chill that way, but it's not, it's not a tent to be spending any amount of timing really unless you're just sleeping. I wasn't expecting to set these tents up and love the Lanshan 2 Pro as much as I did. I've seen the Lanshan 1 in different eyes touching my face and as you can see I was lying on the on the deck with no mat underneath me so that's going to br bring me up a good a good few inches. If you're just doing a long distance hike where weight is a you know, it's essential to get your weight down then maybe the Lanshan 1 but for that extra 100 grams, you can't go wrong with this. It seems ideal. Speaking of seams, it's, it's worth pointing out that these tents don't come seam sealed. So get yourself some seam, some sealant and just go along the seams, maybe put a bit of Nick Wax on it as well, just to give it some extra protection from the rain. So in conclusion, I think I've wrapped it up pretty well. I mean, this this has got to be for some, for, for, your, for the ultra, ultra light backpackers, this is perfect. I would use it as a summer tent where condensation isn't as bad. If you're above 5'8", five, 5'9", five, it ain't for you. You're gonna be claustrophobic. You, the, your foot box of your sleeping bag is gonna to be touching the outer tent, so we'll be susceptible to getting damp. So I would go, and I never thought I'd say it, good, like, whew, I'd go with the Lanshan 2 Pro. Not sponsored, or I've not been given them, or told to say anything. I've bought these out of my own money for, for my, my hobby. <laughs> so I'm just giving you my opinion on them. The Lanshan 2, give it a go. Cheap as chips, but don't take my word for it. As I've said before, what's good for me isn't necessarily good for you. So you might, you might rate the Lanshan 1 more because you like to, to keep your weight down and you don't have any problem with your height or anything like that. And that's good for you. You might not even want a Lanshan. You might not even like camping, but you're just watching because you got lost on internet and you're bored because it's locked down. If so, hello, mate. I hope you're well. So that's it in conclusion, mate. I think they're both excellent tents, but I would choose the Lanshan 2 Pro over the Lanshan 1. Links below for both tents or just Google Lanshan 1 or Lanshan 2. Uh, I think AliExpress, I think there's a few on Amazon. Um, yeah, just Google it and have a look for yourself. So thanks for joining me. I hope you're all well. I know we're living in uncertain and crazy times at the moment, so sending you a lot of love. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll see you soon. Au revoir.